Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I am using the um, Hocus Pocus stamp set and coordinating dies. If the broom fits, this one I'm so super excited about. And then um, Happy Halloween. I did not show you the dies because I did not realize I need them until after the fact. So I'm going to stamp out all of my items here, all of my little witch items along with this little cat. Um, just so I could kind of get an idea in my head of how everything was going to go placement wise. It didn't fit on um, my one piece of cardstock here, so I ended up using two, um, but that's no big deal because later I realized I also need to stamp some more things that I didn't stamp. So I'm going to be using my Intense Black Ink from Honey Bee today. Uh, this is because it's safe for alcohol markers and I will be coloring these images with Copics. Something to note during the stamping process, you can see I am stamping this black cat, but I did not spend a lot of time making sure that he was completely covered. I just need enough of him to be able to color him. Um, stamping him salad black would probably be fine, but because I like to color and have a little bit of dimension, um, I wanted a little bit of him to be able to be shaded. And so I added some more um, ink uh, to his face because I need to retain the shape of his eyes. But other than that, um, the what is there is enough for me to color. I did stamp everything twice because I have not used the set before and I did not prep my stamps in any way. So in order to get just really good coverage and a bold black line, um, I stamped them two times. So now we're working on the background. I am making a slimline card. This is eight and a half by three and a half. Um, I looked at doing it on a regular A2 size card, but I just couldn't make everything fit the way that I wanted it to. And so it just made sense to change the size of it so that everything would fit nice, um, nicely on this slimline size card. I am using the, um, we've used the spider web before, if you remember, and uh, it, that was on my potions card, um, but I am going to be heat embossing it the last time I used it, I think I forgot that I wanted to use it, and so I added it after the fact. And this time I was smart enough to realize that I wanted to use it uh, before I did my ink blending. So I um, treated this with my embossing, um, I was going to say embossing bag, but that's not right, my anti-static tool, um, <laughs> the cotton tail uh, anti-static tool, and um, I am using my... Um, misty sticky mats to hold this in place because this does go edge to edge. Um, so I'm using my pressure tool and then just giving it a little bit of CPR <laughs> to make sure that I have a good image. And then I will peel this off of my mat and I will be heat embossing it with some white detail embossing powder um, just so it shows up really nicely in the background. I have a sparkle embossing powder that I think would probably be really pretty with this as well. Um, I have not used that yet, but Halloween is not uh, not upon us, so there might still be time. I'm not really sure. I just used a dry paintbrush to clean up any areas that um, needed a little bit of help, and then I heat set that until it was nice and glossy and smooth, and then we'll be doing some ink blending. I apologize for my sniffles. This is the I had two voiceovers to do today, and of course, so that meant my allergies were going to act up. Here, these are all the distress inks I'm going to be using. Yes, it's a lot. I know. Um, it's basically a rainbow of colors from the ground up to the sky. Um, really not mad about the way that this came out. It's like a little rainbow, but a spooky rainbow. Um, the only color that I use multiple colors are up. Uh, the only part of it that I use multiple colors for really was the grasses because um, I needed it to kind of fade up. I knew I wanted to put black all around the edges, the black soot around the edges. And so I needed it to kind of fade up to a lighter green in order to make it blend with my yellow. This is sped up quite a bit uh, because I really wanted to be able to talk to you guys today about the coloring of the folds. Um, of the hat and like the pleats that are in the skirt. Um, 
because I know that that's something that is can be sometimes challenging. Uh, at least it was for me when I first started coloring. And so I wanted to spend some time talking about that. That portion will be slowed down. Um, the rest of the coloring is a little bit sped up. Not as sped up as this, um, but a little bit nonetheless. So I'm just working my way from the greens, yellows, oranges, pinks, purples, blues up so that there looks like there is a night sky. Um, when uh, Honeybee was talking about their Halloween release, this was one of the things that I was kind of like, hey, could you um, like do this little witch set? Just because I think it's, um, I just think it's a darling. I think it's so super cute. And I know it's not going to be everybody's thing, and um, but like, have you seen the broom in this set? Oh my gosh, the broom! I love it so much. It's so it's just different than anything I've seen, and I like that immensely. So speaking of Halloween, my son is super into Fortnite right now. Like every elementary school age kid, I think. Um, and so you know, we normally match every Halloween. Last year was the first year we didn't match because I was enormously pregnant with Caitlin. Um, like, in fact, I walked the entire T of my neighborhood. I walked for like three hours on Halloween in the hopes that she would make a uh, early appearance. She did not. Um, she held out. She was a holdout. When now knowing her personality, she's very stubborn. So this does not surprise me whatsoever. Um, but so because of that, I just wore like a pup, like a maternity sh shirt that was like had a little pumpkin on it um, and just like black everything else. And he, what was he last year? Oh, Minecraft. That's what he wanted to be. He was a character from Minecraft. So this year it's Fortnite. Fortnite's the cat's pajamas for all these elementary school kids. Um, and honestly, some other people, um, which no shame. I've, I've loved video games my whole life, but there's some other older people that play, which is why I constantly have to be on him for the online things. There, what you saw me do was just what I typically do, which is spatter my perfect pearls to create my stars slash shimmer. Here, I realized that I needed to stamp these items, um, and I stamped a couple of different bats. And now we're going to move on to the coloring. I'm going to do the cat first. And the cat is black, so I'm going to color all the way out to black from the cool grays. But I am going to leave a little bit of separation in between um, his tail and his body. Um, because that is how he is stamped and how he's intended to be. But otherwise, his lighter portions is going to be on his right hand side. So I'm just filling everything in with my lightest color. And then I will start adding my shading kind of around his tail which, to be very honest, was kind of a wasted effort because uh, the majority of his tail is behind her foot <laughs> in the final card. Um, but anywho, in case you're interested in learning how to do this, um, I, of course, you guys know I like to leave everything in. So just in case you're looking at this card and you're like, well, I don't care about coloring the fold of the skirt, but I want to know how to do the shoes or I want to know how to do the broom. Even though it's sped up, I think it's important to leave it in um, because there's nothing more frustrating than finally finding an example of what it is that you like and would like to create and then finding out that they didn't leave that part in to help you create it. Um, so, anywho, um, this year, Fortnite, and I don't even know what a fish stick is. That's the character's name, Fish Sticks. That's what he wants to be. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, I can't... I cannot uh, dress up as a Fortnite character. I just, it's not going to happen. I don't even know who any of them are. Um, and they're all strange, strange odd ducks. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. Probably also has to do with the allergies. Um, so this year I'm going to match Caitlin. That's, I guess I'm moving from one kid to the other, which is a little bit heartbreaking. Um, but, you know, at least I got a couple more years with her where she'll be willing to match me. Um, so I was trying to come up with a couple of ideas. And when my sisters were here, um, let's talk about the card real quick. So here there's a, like the insert of the shoe, um, where like the laces are and then the outside of the shoe and then the sole. 
the way that I colored it is I left a little bit of a highlight where the shoe points up. I left a little bit of a highlight on top of the shoe and then along the inside edge. Um, that is where I chose to leave my highlights at. And then we will add some white highlight to that later to kind of make them appear a little bit shinier. But this is, there's a lot of black uh, in this car. You know, it's a witch. What are you going to do? She, I want her hat to match her shoes. I got to let her be in style. I can't, I can't put her out there in the world like that. So, um, yeah. So my sister and I were talking about um, some Halloween ideas and there was a couple of things that she had suggested, which we'll talk about after we talk about the hat. So the way this hat is drawn, the brim is very floppy and kind of dips down. That is why I am drawing in this little half oval section that isn't there. I'm adding shading there because the hat droops down. Everywhere else, I'm going to follow the lines of the illustrator that they've already given me. And when you go in, I always start with my lightest color because I'm heavy handed, but also because it's the easiest to cover up. So if you make an error, um, nobody's going to know. Like you can just fix it with your next layer of color. But all I'm doing is the lines that are already down that are already created there is I'm just flicking out the color slightly past that and every time I'm adding a new color I'm going over the same area I'm not adding any more color to it I'm just going over the same area and it looks crazy I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't because the first couple of times you know as I was learning to do it I was like this looks wild this does not even look right and it's not going to look right until you do the last layer of the lightest color. And that's when it all comes together. So is it a long walk to get there? A little bit, but it's worth it. So I'm just going through the, the lines that are already there that are drawn in. I'm doing little flicks of color just past the lines that are already there. The only exception to that is the curl at the top of the hat. I am just outlining the inside of the curl because that would be the darkest. Now at this point, we're all the way out to black and you can still see there's a ton of white because we haven't added any more color than just those little flicks out to extend those lines. That's all we've done and it looks silly. But now we're going to go back in, working from our darkest out to our lightest. I did add a little bit of shading to the brim, where it's kind of swoop, swooping down, but I left a highlight point in between there. And I'm going to bring out these colors now just a little bit more. So I'm just going to extend them slightly past what I've already put down. Again, using that flicking motion, very light pressure, um, and you will have to decide for yourself if flicking away from you works better than flicking towards you, whatever works for you. I am a person that flicking the marker away from me is much more comfortable. So now we're out to the C7, and this is going to be the largest um, portion of our coloring. So we're going to color in almost everything except for our highlight lines. How do we decide where the highlight lines are? The highlight lines are going to be directly next to the darker colored lines. So we're going to pull up the darker color. We're going to go over what's already there and then we're going to leave just a little sliver of white right next to that. That's how you you put your highlights in. So almost all of your the center of your hat will be colored in at this point outside of, again, just leaving that little sliver of white next to um, the lines we've already put down. Again, the only exception to that is going to be this curve. Uh, the highlight will be on the outermost edge. This is where it's all going to come together, and we're going to take our lightest color and go over everything, the entire thing, and fill in all those highlight lines, and you'll be able to see how rumpled and crumply this um, hat looks because of all the shading that we've done. This part in the center seemed a little dark to me, so I did go over it with my lightest color just to blend it in a little better, but at this point, the hat is done, and I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to move on to the skirt. This skirt has folds and pleats, but it's the same concept that we just did. So there's lines that are already drawn there. 
from the top down. So I'm following along those lines. And then at the bottom, the parts that appear to be set back, I'm going to fill in completely with my lightest color. And you'll be able to see already we're starting to get some dimension. I'm then going to take my lightest color and fill in the center section of the top portion of the skirt. We're getting lots of dimension already. I'm going to go working again out to my darkest color. So this is my first mid-tone. And I will do the same thing with this one, except now I'm going to stick back to those lines. I'm going to stick back to the lines that are drawn for the ones in the back. And for the ones in the center, I'm not going to completely cover up my lightest color, but I am going to add darker shading in the middle of the top sections. As I'm moving out to the next color, I'm not really um, adding tons of color. I'm just doing a line next to the portions that are falling in the back and then a line down to the ones that are drawn on the top. Again, filling in the center, not completely covering the top portion. For the darkest color, I'm only going to add this to the pleats that are I want to push to the background and following along the illustrator's lines at the top of the skirt. And then we're going to work back the other way. So some of them are almost going to be completely covered with my first mid-tone, like the pleat on the right-hand side, the back pleat on the right-hand side is almost completely filled in. Then we're going to work out, this is now our second mid-tone, and this is the portion where we're leaving just that little sliver for the lightest color. Everything will kind of be taken over by our two mid-tones. And we'll have just these little slivers of white that are going to be the highlights. And once again, everything will just kind of come together and blend together as we go over it and add our lightest color. I hope that makes sense. I know that it can seem a little um, confusing with the terminology. So for the top of the skirt, I colored in one of the bands with my darkest color, and then the other band I'm actually going to do green to match her tights. Um, so in order to get a little bit of shading there, I'm just going to, um, you know, we've talked about before, when an object lays on top of another object, there'll be shading, and where two points meet, there'll be shading. I'm following those rules in order to get some shading on these ribbons. And then for the tights, I'm going to do my white first, um, and I'm going to color the entire tight uh, with the gray markers, because it's just easier than doing line by line. And my green wall completely cover it up and nobody will be any the wiser. So for this, I did a center highlight. I added shading to the left and right hand side, leaving some pure white areas in the center. And then I worked this out onto um, the C3. I did some flicks, but for the C5, I really just did a line down one side, a line down the other um, for both the left and right side of the tights. And then blended that out with my C3 blended it with the, um, oh, I didn't even do a C1. I skipped that. Uh, no, I skipped the C3. That's what it was. I blended it all out with the C1. And then um, the wonky lines, I just picked every other one to do the green to tie in the skirt. And then we're going to move on to the broom. Look at that broom. I know I talked about it already, but isn't it so cute? It's like just, it's adorable. So anyway, um, my sister and I were talking about some Halloween costume ideas, and she was like, I knew I wanted something warm for uh, Miss Caitlin, because I live in Ohio, it's October, like, it could be snow, it could be 70. Do we know? No, we don't. Uh, so I always err on the side of it be, like, a warmer Halloween costume, because worst case scenario, I could just put her in, like, a t-shirt or onesie underneath it, and her diaper and she'll be fine. Um, otherwise, I need it to be quite warm. So we looked at the kids' costumes first and then tried to come up with ideas from there. So one of them was a lion. So cute, just darling with its little footies um, with like the little lion pads on their feet. Um, and so she was like, you could go as a lion and a lion tamer which I'm okay with that. I also know, um, because I've been doing it with Peanut for years, that like the women's Halloween costumes are a little more um, risque than they are mom 
you know, like kid friendly. So I already know I'm going to have to modify it. I, I always do every year and that's fine. Um, so a lion and a lion tamer was one of them, which I thought was super cute. And then we found a sheep one. So we, um, thought about little Bo Peep, which I thought would be super cute. Um, so I would like to know if you have any other suggestions. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. So here I just colored in the cat's eyes green and the bat's eyes yellow. I'm going to outline my images because that's what I prefer. That's totally a step you can skip. And then I'm going to use all of their coordinating dies to cut them out because let's be honest, there's no way I'm fussy cutting those laces. So once everything is all cut out and now like my background is done, I can start the building of the card, um, which uh, I had to kind of do in layers. So this is the whole card laid out. And I knew that I wanted to pop up some areas and have some areas flat. So the cat, the bats, and the spider, the cat, the bat, and the spider, that almost rhymes, um, are going to be in the background. So I'm going to glue all of those down flat using um, my Honeybee Bee Creative glue. And for some of them, I was able to kind of hold them in place like this cat. It was big enough to hold it in place while I put the glue behind it. Um, for the bats and the spider, I just had to lift them up with the tweezers, put the glue on them, and then hope I placed them back in the right-ish area. Um, so I tried to pay attention to where on the spider web I had them. Um, but, you know, you just put them up there. Just put them up there in the sky. It's, it's fine. And then once I got everything glued, I did go in before I added anything else um, and color the white outlines. That's a me thing. It might not be a you thing. If you're interested in um, coloring them, I would just suggest you try out a couple of colors on a scrap piece of paper before you go direct to your outline. And you may have to combine uh, colors to get the shade that you're looking for, which is really no big deal. Um, so I did color all of those in. I will spare you. Once I was happy with the way that those looked, the cat I had to leave because there's going to be items on top of it, so I might have to adjust it accordingly. I put foam tape on the rest of everything else, on the hat, on the sentiment, on the skirt, the feet, the broom. And um, so once I was done with that, I started from the bottom up building. Um, so I put her feet down first and I did use my um, scissors, or I'm sorry, my tweezers to aid me in some areas and other areas. They were big enough that I didn't need them. So here, putting down those, and I didn't push them down until I was sure I was happy with where they were, and then just kind of built her up from there. I am also going to um, go in and uh, color the edges of this as well, so she kind of blends back into her scene. There was, I, in this video, um, this is how I put the sentiment originally. And you guys know, and we talk about it all the time, about how, um, you know, sometimes if you're kind of not feeling a card that, you know, if you walk away and come back to it, you can either find that you really loved it or you can find that you still need to change something about it. So at this point, this is the card and I'm feeling like the spider web is maybe a little bit distracting. Um, but I'm like, okay, well, let me go ahead and, you know, put in some ground under her and Copic color, um, you know, my outline, and maybe that will help it so that it's not so distracting from the background. So that's what I'm working on here. I'm just kind of working my way up, and I did have to, you know, play around with the colors a little bit. I have a Copic hex chart, um, that Sandy Allnack sells, I think it's like $5, uh, which I use, um, I will typically put it next to my card so that I can kind of see them next to each other and find the one that matches my background the best. Because, you know, when you're blending those distress things, you're getting secondary colors. So at this point, um, I'm going to go in, I'm going to add my white highlights. I added some little eyes, 
uh, little white dots to the eyes of the cat. I'm adding, like I told you, those shine lines to the shoes. I also added some highlights to the broom and the hat because I wanted it to look, to look like it was shiny. Um, and I'm going to tell you I didn't love it. This is the completed card um, outside of just adding the shimmer. So I added some clear shimmer to everything because shouldn't witches have glitter? I think they should. I think they should be glittery witches. Um, they're like the princesses of Halloween. And so this is done. And I let it sit on my desk all weekend, and I did not, I wasn't happy with the way it was looking. So first things first, I wanted to get rid of the white highlight that I added to the hat. And I'm going to do that by just going over it with my lightest Copic color um, to blend it back in. It doesn't remove the gel pen, but it does knock it back, so it's not as noticeable. And then I went through, I'm not kidding, four different versions of this sentiment. I kept trying them. Like, you know how when you guys ask me something and you're like, hey, will X work? And I say, try it. Um, it's because that's what I have to do because I can't picture it. So I did, I originally did black ink on a white background. I didn't love it. So I was like, let me flip flop it. So then I did black with white and I was like, meh, I'm not really a hundred percent sure that that's how I want that to look. Um, and so then I was like, well, I'll stamp it in black and then I'll ink blend it to match the background. So I tried that and the colors I picked were just based on the color and the card, like where it lined up at. Um, and so I just went back in with those three colors and put some, uh, color on it. And I realized very quickly that the black was too dark. Um, you couldn't even read the sentiment. So I put that on the card and I was like, nope, that ain't it. No, no, no. So I went back to the white heat embossing, uh, but this time I did white on white so that I could do the ink blending. And this ended up being the winner for me. But I had to go back through. I had to make all of them. Now they won't go to waste um, because uh, I'll just put them, you know, in my little stamp packet so the next time I use the, the stamp, I'll be able to just pull those out and maybe they'll already be done and they'll go with the next card that I make and I'll be able to use them because um, they're still perfectly good sentiments. I just don't like them with this card. So I'm going through and adding the Distress Inking on top. And then once I am happy with that, I did use a um, like a baby wipe that was on the dryish side to go over and just wipe the ink off on top of the white. And then I put that one in place and I was like, yes, that is better. Do I still think that the how like the spider web is a little bit competing? Kind of. Um, but ultimately I was pretty pleased with the way that the card came out. I did just glue this right on top of the um, prior one because it's on there with foam tape. I saw no reason to pull it up when I could just glue this one right on top of it. And that worked for me and I was happier with the way the card looked. So you guys will have to let me know which one you would have preferred. That is the whole card. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope that you learned something and that you'll try this, um, you know, the folds technique. Let me know how it goes and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.